Hello, I'm EVM and welcome back to the channel. And this is about solar diver options. So essentially, if you have solar panels or you're thinking of getting them, it's always best to use electricity rather than exploit to the grid. I'll explain more in a second, but effectively, these are the options, very simply put, that you have when it comes to solar divert. And these are the ones that I would go for first. But remember, everyone's situation is different. There are variations, there are different budgets, different houses, different everything, really. So this is a very generic approach to solar diver. It doesn't mean it's perfect for you, but hopefully it'll give you a, a fair idea because I get this question an awful lot. I've got panels, what's next? For those that are unsure as to what solar divert or excess solar is, effectively the sun shines down on your solar panels and then they generate electricity. So let's imagine you're generating 900 watts right now. Your house is using 600 watts, so that means you've got 300 watts of excess solar to do something with. If you don't have any solar diver options, then essentially it will all go and get exported to the grid. That's why I've put it in red, because that's bad. As I said earlier, you get paid, well, I get paid just over four pence per kilowatt hour if I export to the grid. But if I want to buy from the grid, which is what we all do, then it's what, about 34 pence, possibly a bit more. So you wanna use the solar rather than export it because you're saving way, way more by doing that. There are a few options. I've listed four basic ones here. Uh, starting with this one, the immersion heater. That essentially, if you have a tank of water in your house, so I, I have one because I have a heat pump, but a lot of people still have that, that, that tank of water that gets heated up maybe at night, for example. You can get solar divert options for them. And these are probably on the cheaper side of, of the options. So what happens is that 300 watt will go into essentially a kettle inside that water tank and heat the water up. It doesn't necessarily get it up to full temperature, but the more it heats it up, the less effort your heating system has to put into it, whether that's a heat pump or a gas boiler or whatever it is. There are a few downsides. One, it can't get any more than 100% efficient. And two, if you're not in, you can't really make use of that solar energy because you're heating water up but you're not around. So essentially it's a when you're at home option. That's the same for the car. So if you have an electric car or a plug-in hybrid, then you can get some chargers that will solar divert to the car. Then it means if the car's plugged in, any excess solar will go into your car battery. So it's free fuel, which obviously is a good thing. But the limitations on that are of course, if the car's not at home or if it's not plugged in, then that won't work. So that for me is more of a secondary thing. It's not a primary solar diver option because, well, for us, the car's probably out more than it's at home because we both work different shift patterns and it wouldn't really make that much sense. A nice to have, but probably the lowest of the bunch out of all these options. The reason why an immersion year is kind of pointless for me is because I would rather use that excess of energy to power the heat pump which at the moment is running at around 300% efficient for my hot water than the immersion heater. Because the immersion heater, as I said before, would be at best 100% efficient, the heat pump 300% efficient. So therefore I would rather put the energy into that because I would only need, well, what a third of the energy compared to the immersion heater to actually heat all the water up. I mean, don't get me wrong, you've already got it there, use it, but, I would rather power that efficient heat pump than an inefficient immersion heater, if that makes sense. Now, this, the home battery, this is by far the best option. Unfortunately, it's also by far the most expensive because, well, you're looking at anywhere from three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it depends how big the battery is, of course, that adjusts the cost, but this is always there. So it's not like a car where it's sometimes there. It's always usable. It can always store lots of energy and then you can use it at other times. So if I have lots of solar in summer, my battery can store all that energy up and then I could use it all at night time or for the heat pump to heat the hot water up when I need it rather than when the sun is out. Now, this last option here, the manual option. 
This is almost a no cost one and it's not very effective, but it can least utilize more solar than just leaving it to it, leaving your house as it is. This is essentially turning things on. So if you have, let's say, I don't know, 500 watts of, of, of excess solar right now, and you think, well, the sun's out, it looks like it's gonna be here for a while, you know, there's no clouds due, then turn the dishwasher on, do some washing up, um, press the boost on your heating, or, well, not heating, hot water, Presumably it's summer and you don't need the heating. But basically, turn something on that you may have used during the night or later on. Just, just turn it on earlier. So it needs to be something that's actually usable. Don't just waste electricity for the sake of wasting it. But if you wanted to charge something up, I used to do this with my Renault Twizy. If I had a load of solar coming in and the battery was full, I'd start the Twizy charging because it only charged at a very slow rate. And then all that excess solar went into the car so i was i was, I was utilizing it in another storage medium see that's all these are a battery stores electrical energy an immersion heater stores heat which is essentially energy as well um, and manually turning something on is just using it at a more optimal time but it will again increase the amount of solar energy you can utilize and will save you at least some money so this is something you can do straight away and even after you've got some of these, I sometimes think, wow, the sun's out, my battery's full, the hot water's hot, I'll turn the dishwasher on. So we normally leave it till night time when the energy rate is cheap for us. So yeah, which would I go for first? Battery, clearly, but it's the most expensive. After that, I think for me, the immersion heater, it's probably only gonna be what, five or 600 pounds, something like that, but you have to have a hot water cylinder there to make use of it. Otherwise, then you have to buy a hot water cylinder, some plumbing, obviously, and, and, and the diver option. So that increases the cost. So let's imagine it's going to cost you £1,500. And I haven't quoted this. I'm just kind of from what I've read online. If you're going to spend £1,500 getting a hot water tank and an immersion heater sort of set up to go with your solar panels, I personally would take that 1500 quid and put it towards a battery. So you might not be able to get it straight away, but if you keep, it, it, it's, it's already leaping you forward in saving up for that battery. This is why everybody's different. Every situation is unique. Think of what you want to end up with in the next few years. Are you getting a battery in the next few years? If the answer is yes, then personally, I would sack that one off and put the money towards the battery to speed up that installation of it. They're like jigsaw pieces. It'd be great if you had all of them make up the whole puzzle. But ultimately, you need to do your own research. Again, everybody's different. That's it, nice short video. Happy Tuesday and thank you for watching. And don't forget, there is a join button next to subscribe and that means you become a member. So for 99p, you can pay more if you want, you get a live stream, which I did yesterday for members only and they asked me any questions directly. I will answer them all. And a lot of people do email me asking for advice that's the best place to do it because I can't answer the millions of emails I get every year. So this is a way of filtering them through, I suppose. You'll also get videos a week early and a few other benefits, uh, you know, like occasional members only videos. So please do that. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.